Hi, in this video I am going to check how good Ozone 11 actually is. I am going to compare versions 9, 10 and 11 with regard to Mastering Assistant to show you the, evol the evolution. I also show you how to stem master. If you'd like to process vocals, bass or drums separately during the mastering stage, I will also reveal a special hack to you how to listen to those stems in solo. So is it time for us mastering engineers to quit our jobs? Well, the answer is not that straightforward actually. Okay, let's start with the comparison. Version 9, 10 and 11, Mastering Assistant. We are listening to the track created by Pablo de Grey in his beautiful home studio full of hardware and the track is called Revival. Now I will switch between different uh, Ozone versions. But as you can see, Ozone recognizes this recording as a rock recording, so I'll need to switch to EDM, look how the curve changes, and of course this change will be reflected in the settings too. Let's compare again Ozone 10 versus Ozone 11. Alright, but before I show you my own master, let me tell you a few words how it works. So first time you launch Ozone, there is a blank slate. If you're experienced, you can dial in your own settings. Uh, if you think you know what the recording actually uh, needs, of course you can use Magic Q for instance to measure the tonal balance of your favorite recording. Uh, you can use Excitement, you can search for uh, perfect uh, multiband uh, presets uh, and adapt it. Then you can of course stabilize, saturate and uh, finally usually use a maximizer. And basically, uh, and basically that's it. But you can also ask the master assistant to do the job for you. You just need to play the loudest part of your recording and then it makes the settings for you. So you can tweak it. And here's your starting point. Of course, you have to check uh, whether the genre was recognized and then choose the most suitable one uh, so that the tonal balance is uh, most uh, suitable. And then you have the new feature, vocal balance. It actually recognized that the lead as a vocal now. So I can just turn it off and then I've got my macros. I can make the recording narrower or wider in the stereo field. I can make it more clear brighter, I can stabilize it more, I can make it louder or less uh, compressed and I can choose how much EQ I need. And of course all those settings uh, can be tweaked separately in detail here. So yeah, and usually the good practice is to save those mastering assistant uh, settings and make your own master using some of those settings and then compare it. If you've got Isotope Audio Lens, you can also create your own targets. You just hit Capture, uh, choose the right part of the commercial recording. I cannot play it to you, I'm sorry. And then it will create a target for you. It just needs a few seconds of uh, audio. And then you, you hit Stop, you uh, put a name. And this uh, curve will now be available in uh, Ozone. So now I just have to choose Hidden T, it's searching for enhancements and BAM. Here's your settings based on this track. There are a few reasons why Ozone 11 sounds much better than previous versions. Look at the mastering assistant in Ozone 9. 
just basic settings, only three modules used. Then in Ozone 10, Stabilizer and Impact were introduced and they are used by Mastering Assistant. And then in the version 11, we now have uh, also Clarity module that pulls the blanket of down mixes, as they say, and it really does. You've got upward compression here and also more macros and vocal rebalance if it needs to. You are very patient, so now I will present you my own settings and compare it to the mastering assistant uh, settings. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, mastering assistant settings above and below my settings. I actually sticked with the with the rock target and then I just tweaked it. So uh, I tweaked EQ, I checked uh, imager, I used clarity uh, a little bit uh, more. I also changed the stabilizer settings and added low end focus, uh, vintage compression and some spectral shaping so it sounds a little bit bigger so I can feel more in the music. I can know so how to explain it, but the feeling should be more immersive with my master. So now I'm going to present you my first STEM mastering project. Uh, it turned out pretty, pretty well, and I'm kind of excited how it went. Uh, look, this first instance processes only vocal. This one is used for drums. This... Uh, this one is for bass and the last one uh, in the lower right corner is for the whole mix. So let me show you how it sounds now. I bet you never tell them how it feels I bet you never even try to be real Don't you think like that I will... Okay, I promise I'll show you how to listen to each stem separately. So this is how you do it. Uh, of course we have to switch the processor to you know bass, drums or vocal mode and then I suggest you place an equalizer, you filter off everything using a brick wall uh, you know filter and then you turn on delta. And now when I hit play Don't you think like that? I will love you in this place. I'm hearing just vocals and I could, you know, equalize the vocals, I could uh, make them a bit brighter, saturate them or make them wider. And now I'll show the difference between the narrow and wide vocal in the mix. So I have to turn off the delta and the equalizer. So the same way I can make bass solo. I'll show you. So that way I could make the bass a little bit bigger. I excited it so it sounds warmer and also I made it a little bit wider but only in the mid-range. So it's pretty amazing. And turning off the delta you can listen to the whole mix without the bass. So now I could focus more on the drums. And look, I used the spectral shaper. I found some authentic frequencies and then I can listen in Delta what's being deducted, but just from the drums. So this is really amazing. So, 
I bounce the mix uh, with just uh, one instance of Ozone using mastering assistance. So this is the first version and I also bounced uh, my uh, stem mastering here. So let's compare one instance. Don't you think like that? I will love you For instances, don't you think like that? I will love you endlessly if you don't believe in me. One instance, don't you be like that? I will love you forever. For instances, don't you be like that? I have been using Ozone since version 2. The second version was my first version I actually bought. Uh, then from a Polish printed magazine I got version 4 for a review and I was super excited because there was mid-side mastering all over the place. And then they released those vintage modules in version 6 and 7 I think. That was also very cool. And since version 9 came out I started to rely quite heavily on the mastering assistant settings. Uh, uh, as a starting point. So I looked the EQ settings, uh, I, ch I was checking my mixes, whether they were too bass heavy, whether they were dull or maybe too bright, and then I checked those dynamic EQ settings, which usually were really, really on the spot. So, uh, you know, and, and now when I listen to those uh, tracks with the mastering assistant in version 11, then I think it's like almost 85 to 90% there. So there is not much to do, actually. Of course, there's a starting point and you can tweak from there, but you're already there. I mean, it already sounds very good. So if you ask me whether it's worth to upgrade from the version 10, I would say, yeah, go for it. Hell yeah, because it's really much better. More modules are used by the mastering assistant and the masters are uh, more uh, cohesive. Uh, they are more... Uh, in the line with what is being released actually level-wise and brightness-wise and also this clarity module is really groundbreaking because it uh, makes uh, it makes the recording sound uh, you know polished and bright but not harsh uh, and it it is really a game changer because it, it may help you achieve this uh, this sort of brightness and air you are looking for without you know breaking the bank or having some esoteric analog stuff it really works and it works pretty well so the question is will ozone 11 replace a mastering engineer will ozone 11 put mastering engineers out of their businesses well i don't think so at least not for now and not for big studios but for small studios the things may change because uh, I think many, uh, you know, composers, many producers uh, that can achieve a decent mix now will be able to get a decent master from Ozone. So they will be not, they will be not, uh, they will be reluctant to spend, you know, money on on, on some online services uh, to pay somebody to, to to make a you know a digital master using plugins because the best plugin is already available actually so yeah so this this may change our environment uh, are there some areas for improvement uh, well yes uh, at least in the target department i think uh, ozone 11 still does not recognize the genres very well uh, i usually have to switch rock into e to edm or pop to r&b etc and also it does not provide uh, some specific targets for music like trap or drum and bass, tech house, classic house, techno, and those genres differ very much, especially in the bass department. Uh, kicks are tuned differently in trap 
and differently in classic house. So this could be improved. Of course, you can use audio lenses if you have it. Uh, so we can analyze a bunch of recordings and make uh, a broad target for it, uh, because otherwise we'll produce a very narrow target if you use just one recording. But still, it requires uh, some uh, additional work. Uh, there are next steps and you have to import it and, you know, but it works. So this could be, this could be a little bit better. And I think that in the future, Ozone uh, will go into the stem mastering tool. I am already an analyzing using Isotope RX editor. I was able to separate bass, drums, and I am analyzing it in different genres. So I think this may happen. Uh, if Ozone can get you a perfect bass and great drums, and then it can master it, well, it will be, a, you know, it will be a different beast. And I think it will happen at some point. Uh, I don't know where, maybe Ozone 12, well, who knows? <laughs> who knows?